your hands unto the Lord. Come on, that's all right. It's all right. Bless his name. Bless his name. Worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 He's all right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We are in the book of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, and we're at verse 6. Verse 6 through 15. Go ahead, let's take it. Go ahead. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. We're at verse 6, and it reads, Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Yes. Uh-huh. Yes, and God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, somebody say all things, all things. At, all times, at all times, having all that you need, yes. you will abound in every good work. Yes. Verse 9, as it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. 
Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. So you will be enriched in every way. Somebody say every way. So that you can be generous on every occasion. Right, right. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Yes, yes. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but it is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to yes, God. Yes, yes. Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, Others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given to you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Somebody see, thanks be to God for this indescribable gift. Tonight, I'm asking you the question, God's will, are you about it, about it? All right, all right. God's will, are you about it, about it? Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just ask for your presence. I ask you that you will move me out of the way and that your word will go forth with power and that the seed will be planted in our hearts so that fruit, will come forth yes. that fruit the fruit of the spirit will be born in us and if you agree with that prayer say amen, amen. and say thank you, Jesus, thank you Jesus for the word of God now for all of y'all that uh, ain't about what I'm talking about <laughs> you're not, not sure what I'm talking about if you bout it bout it or not the urban dictionary's primary definition for bout it is down for whatever. Uh, it's short for being all about it. Uh -huh. Or it, it means I'm all about whatever I'm talking about. I'm serious, and some some call it being hardcore. Okay. <laughs> so I'm asking you again tonight: When it comes to God's will, are you about it? About it? Are you down for whatever? God was about it in his love for you and me when he gave his only son Jesus to die on the cross. And Jesus was about it when it came to the will of the Father when he let them drive those nails in his hands and in his feet. God was generous with his love then and God is generous with his love now. God was a giving God then. And he is a giving God today. Can you hear me? Amen. The scripture says God gives seed to the sower. Right, right. Somebody say it. God, God gives seed, give seed to, the sower. to the sower. So let me break it down to you. To the one who does not consume everything he or she gets. Right, right, right. Uh, see, it doesn't say God gives seed to the consumer. Right, right. Uh, no, God gives seed to the sower. Yes, to the one who will plant what he or she has received so that a greater harvest can be obtained, God will give him or her the seed. Uh, seed, hear me, is for sowing. Trouble is too many of us are eating up the seed instead of sowing. We're eating up the seed instead of sowing. God has given us seed in the form of time. Uh -huh. God has given us seed in our talents. God has given us seed in our treasures or our money. As long as we are willing to be sowers of the seed, God will continue to supply us with more seed. Okay. As long as you remain willing to sow your time, somehow God will give you more time. Uh, somebody say, I need more. 
I need more. As long as you remain willing to sow your talents uh -huh. in the kingdom of God, God will continue to increase your abilities to do that thing and multiply your reach. Uh huh. As long as you remain willing to sow your finances and material blessings in the house of the Lord, God will continue to supply you with more. So that you will always have a harvest and you can always be a blessing. I'm going to be a blessing. I'm going to be a blessing. If you do not plant your seed, however, nothing will grow. Uh-huh. If you do not plant your seed, nothing will grow. All those times you spend and you spend and you spend and do not set something aside for the kingdom of God. It is equivalent of eating your seed. Uh -huh. And just like the farmer with no crops, he will soon have nothing to sell and nothing to eat either. Uh -huh. All those times you decide not to invest your time in the house of the Lord. It was funny to me how attendance at Bible study on Tuesday took a real big dip in the month of October when we were evangelizing. Yeah. And more and more reports came in how it seemed like all kinds of situations started popping up in our lives, started jumping off, eating up all our time. Yeah. Suddenly all our time was being consumed with putting out fires that the devil had set. Uh, how we decide to use our talents too often for the world and its endeavors, but for some reason we won't support the church and God's plans with our abilities. We, we, we can get all dressed up to the nine hair and makeup flawless for the brick. Mm. We can finger pop and vogue and don't want to miss a beat down at Joe's. Yeah. But seem like it's okay to be late for church. And, uh, and oh, Lord, wh when is this singing going to stop? And uh, when's it going to be over so I can sit down? Mm -hmm. And soon it ain't too long before they're not making room for you at the club anymore. Uh huh. They done got bored with your act. Uh. And you're not getting in free no more. <laughs> they, they want you to pay the cover charge now. <laughs> you got to keep reinventing yourself so people will stay interested and take notice. <laughs> uh, 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 before you know it, you not only got to pay your own way. If you want to have some friends, you got to pay their way too. Uh, okay. But when you sow and invest in the kingdom of God, the Bible says your gift will make room for itself. Uh -huh. uh. And tonight I'm trying to get you to break out of the mold. Uh -huh. The mold that says it's all about me, myself, and I. Uh, the mold that constrains me and binds me from living a giving life. One that holds you down from flowing in God's generosity. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get you to understand tonight that the more you give, the more you will receive. And that withholding yourself, your time and your talents, and yes, your treasures, your money, only clogs up your pipes and prevents you from receiving what God has for you. The more you offer to God, the more God will use. The more God will multiply. And you might not want to believe me tonight, but I dare you to trust God. Malachi 3 and 10 says, Bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, See if I will not open the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. All right, all right, all right. Now, we learned last week that for the New Testament believer, the tithe can be the starting place. Uh huh. The starting place for our giving. But the standard for New Testament giving in the kingdom of God now is God's own example. And the example of Christ Jesus himself. God 
gave God's best when he gave Jesus. And Jesus gave his life. So as Christian believers, if we are about it, about it, we ought to determine in our hearts firstly that we will not come to the house of God empty handed. Uh huh. That we will have something to give and that we will give our best. Hallelujah. If we bout it, bout it, we ought to determine in our hearts that we will not shut down on the church when we are called upon to be the church. Whether we are fellowshipping or evangelizing or fundraising or cleaning toilets, whether we are landscaping in the yard, going to the pantry to bring food, or coming to choir rehearsal or running the camera or the sound system, whatever the church is doing, as a part of the church, if you bout it, bout it, you ought to be investing your time and your talents and your treasures generously. In the house of the Lord. Well, pastor, you say, I ain't got no bus fare. Mm. I ain't got no gas. And I got this and that going on at the house. Well, baby, you sure make it to the club when you want to get there. And you ain't telling your boss on the job that you ain't got no gas. Because all they're going to tell you is, well, you ain't got no job either. And you sure can't go to anybody's job smelling any kind of way or looking any kind of way. So why are you trying to get by with less in the house of God? I'm asking the question tonight. God's will. Are you about it, about it? Uh, Honey, when you decide that you ain't going to let nothing come between you and serving God, that's when all that other stuff is going to get in line. Uh Uh-huh. You have authority. And all that rebellion in your heart when you say, well, I ain't finna do all that. It it, it don't take all that. Mm. Well, you stingy little so-and-so. With everything that God has done, is doing, and will do, really, really, you gonna sit back and try to see how little you can get by with? Oh. You really going to sit up there and see how long you can go without coming to church. You really going to sit on your gifts and not sing and scowl your way through church service. Uh, You're not going to encourage nobody. Not going to share the love of God with others. Really? You're just going to spend up all the money and the blessings God gave you on yourself. Really? Really? And you wonder why you always broke. Why you depressed and Running crazy. Uh Uh-huh. You ain't sowed no seed. So you're not reaping any harvest. Uh Uh-huh. Our text tonight in verse 6 says, remember this. Remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. It says, God will increase your seed. Why? Verse 11. It says, so that you, somebody say I. I. So I will be enriched in every way so that you, say I. I. So I can be generous on what? Every occasion. That means when you give without worrying about when I'm going to get it back. When you give generously, God will make sure there is enough so you can be generous all the time, every time. Mm -hmm. So that means you ain't going to have to worry about yours. Somebody say, I don't have to worry about mine. I don't have to worry about mine because I'm going to be able to be generous all the time, all the time. It starts with you putting your trust in God. Being intentional about giving of yourself. Uh, Intentional about giving of yourself. Your finances. It's a both and kind of thing. Not an either or. (laughs) 
you give of yourself, you give of your time, you give of your talents, and you give of your money. It, it's, it's, a, it's a both and. It's an inclusive thing. It's a holistic thing. Hallelujah. <laughs> but you got to start somewhere. If you don't have an income, bring some canned goods. If you don't have no canned goods, bring some clean clothes. If you don't have no clean clothes, put your hands to it and volunteer here on the property. If you can sing, come faithfully and give your voice in this choir. Uh -huh. If you can smile and shake a hand, we need some ushers around here. Uh -huh. If you got computer or electronic skills, there's room for you too. One or two people cannot do it all. And the church really loses its impact and momentum when only half of us show up from one week to the next. When only some of us are giving freely and the rest of us are stuck in selfish mode. I'm asking you tonight, God's will, are you about it, about it? You can't expect to live full and productive lives, lives where you can always be generous, and you only make it half the investment. You will always live beneath and never above when you can only invest the bare minimum. Uh, if you don't fully invest in your education, you will lack opportunity. If you do not fully invest in your relationships, they will lack foundation and eventually crumble. If you do not fully invest in paying your bills on time, debt will eventually overtake you. If you do not fully invest in the kingdom of God, there will be no heavenly reward for you. And I say to you tonight that you are indeed not fully invested in the kingdom of God if your entire relationship with God only happens within these four walls. You are indeed half-stepping and holding out on God if your relationship with God begins and ends at the threshold of these doors. I'm asking you tonight, God's will. Are you about it, about it? Somebody's going to help me preach this thing. On, tu on Tuesday night this past week at Lyft, we talked about, is Jesus really your Lord? Is he the Lord of our lives? Is he the Lord of our time? Is he the Lord of our talents and our treasures? And my God, if you weren't here, you needed to be. We talked at length about how many have accepted Jesus as Savior, but many of the same have not made Jesus their Lord. How if Jesus is your Lord, then you don't belong to yourself anymore. Uh, Jesus is the one who's running things and calling the shots in your life. And Jesus says what you do with your time. Jesus says what you do with your talents. Jesus says what you do with your money. We are not our own anymore. It's no longer I that lives, but Christ who is living in me. So when I might want to get fly, and go to the club and drop it like it's hot or wobble wobble whatever they do in these days. That means I don't just get to turn off the voice of God and do whatever I want to do. Amen. Why? Because God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Uh huh. And he wants your best, not your scraps. God don't want half of you. He wants all of you. Uh huh. Are you down? <laughs> Are you about it, about it? <laughs> Are you down for whatever? <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> so why is it so hard to be generous with your life? Why is it we hold back in certain areas of our lives with God? In order to do this, in order to give yourself fully to God, you're going to have to start trusting God to be the kind of God that he says he is. Amen. The trouble is, you do not fully trust and believe 
that you can cast your cares upon God and that he really does care for you. You do not yet fully trust and believe that God will give back to you, pressed down, shaken together, running over, when you give of yourself and your material possessions. You do not fully trust and believe that God will be your everything when it seems like you have nothing. Not ready yet. Not ready yet to trust God or believe in verse 8 of our text tonight when it says that God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, you will have all that you need. You will abound to every good word. That means God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. All means all. We recite it every week in our stewardship creed. Every time we give, it sounds like a, a boring, broken record sometimes. Why? Because we don't really believe it yet. We don't re believe that we're going to be sufficient in all things. Uh huh. We don't believe it yet because uh, we don't want to be sufficient in all things. And God bless and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, when, when you believe it, it's going to come some, from somewhere on the inside of you. And the scripture will come alive to you. He says all things at every occasion. Glory to the name of God. Uh-huh. All things at all times. Everything you need. He'll keep you when you're lonely. He'll keep you when you're hot and bothered. He'll keep you through your drug and alcohol cravings. Yes, he will. Uh-huh. But instead of resisting the devil... We let it overtake us. And we say cock a doodle do anything we'll do. Instead of yielding ourselves to the will of God. And I'm asking you about God's will tonight. Are you about about him? Jesus paid a price. You have been bought and paid for. You are not your own. Your body doesn't even belong to you. It is the habitation of the Lord. You are a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's running things now. And if Jesus say don't go there. Uh, you best not go there. Because you're not your own. If the word of God say don't neglect coming to church and being the church. Then you best show up and be a part of the church. You are not your own. When the Lord said clean yourself up and stop the drinking and stop the drugs and stop the prostituting and stop the drug dealing, take a bath and get off the streets, Jesus is Lord. Your response should be nothing else but yes, Lord. When Jesus says it's time to come out the club and be ye separate, your response ought not to be, but Lord, what about my friends? Huh. But Lord, this is how I make my money. Huh. Because whatever excuse you make for not giving the Lord what he has required of you, that is your Lord and not Jesus Christ. Whatever you allow to prevent you from obeying God, that is your Lord. Whoever you let come in between you and serving God, they are your Lord. And I suggest that you evaluate whom and what you have allowed to have ownership over you. That's what lordship means. Ownership. I suggest that you evaluate who you have and what you have allowed to have ownership of you. I strongly suggest you evaluate whom or what you have allowed to have lordship of your time. Over your talents. Over your treasures. Over your heart. Can those things, those places, that person, those people, can they save your soul? Mm. And some of you may be thinking, oh, so what? What's the big deal? I'm saved, I'm going to heaven, and that's all that matters. You say you believe that Jesus died for your sins, and that's all that matters in terms of where I will spend eternity. But the scripture clearly tells us, Jesus said it himself, not everyone who cries, Lord, Lord, 
will enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Uh. But how about right now? While you are choosing other things and other people to be your Lord, can they heal you when you're sick? Uh. Will they stick closer to you than a brother? Mm. Now how about when the money run out? Uh. Down at the brick and the Joes and chairs, are they going to show up and help carry you when you're at your lowest point? I don't think so. Because, baby, they don't know you beyond a cover charge. They don't know you beyond all them drinks they want you to buy for them. Uh -huh. The club can't do what God can do. God is the only one who can increase your supply. God is the only one who can enlarge the return on your right standing with him. Jesus said, if you drink of the water that I give you, you will never thirst again. And baby, all the club can offer you is a setup. A setup to be dependent on things that do not last. We so down for being at the club. We so bout it, bout it. <laughs> but are we bout it, bout it for the will of God? I need you to understand tonight that giving to and serving the Lord taps you into a source that is eternal and never runs out. There ain't no more looking around to see who's going to buy the next round. <laughs> no more who's going to hustle up some money this time. Why am I harping on the clubs and, and certain ways of life tonight? Because too many of our lives are just existing in a limited pool of resource. And as long as you keep swimming in that pool, you will never grow. You're like that goldfish in a bowl. That never gets any bigger because it adapts to its surroundings. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Never gets any bigger because it adapts to its surroundings. But if you were to set that same fish free right. yeah. in a pond, yeah. it would grow to be enormous yeah. as it is no longer limited by the confines of that bowl. Yeah. Yeah. I realize the club plays a vital part in many young people's lives and some of our lives. It, it played a big part in my life coming up. Yeah. It was a place where we could find acceptance when we had been kicked out of everywhere else. It was the place we went to find love when church and our families had failed. Mm -hmm. The music and the connections we made took us on a ride to a place that was far, far away from our awful, awful realities. Everybody seemed happy at the club. Free expression and being able to let loose and be ourselves was the name of the game. Right. We didn't care how much it was going to cost us because we had found a place just to be. Right. Mm -hmm. The club also became the place that exposed us to the many hidden dangers of this world. And unwittingly, we were introduced to the devil's plan for our destruction. Mm -hmm. Lives of drug abuse and addiction, lives of prostitution and the spread of HIV and other sexually transmitted diseases, not to mention the countless heartbreaks and one night stands. Back then, we didn't have churches that told us that God loved us. Uh -huh. It was all about God's judgment. Back then, we didn't have anywhere to go. Back then, the club was our church. Uh -huh. It was the place we found refuge. We didn't have preachers and pastors who were willing to step out of the pulpit and reach out to us. We didn't have positive role models and mentors and HIV activists and educators to lead us and help us along the way. We didn't have veterans counseling programs. Churches that did not demonize mental illness and those who are divorced or unmarried were slim to find. Back then, most churches felt threatened by AA and the other addiction support organizations. Mm -hmm. Hence, sadly, 
people began to find more safety in organizations outside the church than they would in the company of God's people. The club and many of these alternative organizations have had a purpose in our lives, but they can only take us so far. They are limited and they will stunt your growth as a believer as they tend to make you dependent on temporary highs and systems that are detached from complete dependence on God. And these days, not only are the fish bowls confined, They're also dirty. And the longer you continue to swim and breathe and eat in those unclean environments, the sicker and weaker you become. The harder it becomes to see a way out. The more hopeless your situation gets and the greater your need for a savior. Today, though, we are so blessed. We are so blessed. We have options. Uh, today our lives don't have to go the way of destruction Hmm. we don't have to go the way of destruction before you find your way into right relationship with God Mm -hmm. in some ways the burden has again been borne for you by others who have gone before you so you can be free you don't have to be an alcoholic a drug addict or a prostitute You don't have to subject yourself to abusive relationships or or giving away your body or taking off your clothes just to have money enough for something to eat or a place to lay your head. You don't have to be out on the streets doing dirt, running game, and and making a bad name for yourself. Life does not have to kick the crap out of you before you can walk in the free-flowing blessings of God. These days, you can choose to serve the Lord. You could choose to serve the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, with everything that you are. You can give it over to Jesus. That is, generously give your life over to Jesus to be used for God's purposes. For his will to be accomplished. For the will of the Father to be done. Those who do the will of the Father are the ones who will enter the kingdom of heaven, Jesus said. Not the will of the club. Not the will of my family. Not the will of the one I'm trying to get with. Not even my own will. The one who does the will of the Father. God's will are you about it, about it. So what is the will of the Father? Who wants to know? (laughs) Uh, the will of the father listen up I'm going to tell you the will of the father is this Jesus said it in John chapter 6 and and verse 40 for my father's will is that everyone who looks to the son and believes upon him shall have eternal life and I will raise them up at the last day It is the will of the Father that all who have believed upon Jesus will be raised up by Jesus to live forever. In Matthew 18 and 14, Jesus said, It is not the Father's will that not one should perish. That not one of you would miss out on eternal life. That's the will of the Father. Where are you placing your trust today? Is it in Jesus? Or is it in your job? Is it in Jesus? Or is it in your hustle? Is it in Jesus? Or in the many distractions of this world and how much fun you can have at the club? Is Jesus Lord of your life or is he Lord only when you come to church? Is Jesus Lord of your hands? Is he Lord of your mouth, your body, your thoughts? Is Jesus Lord of your time, your talents, your treasures? Is he the Lord of your money? Is he the Lord of your heart and life today? 
A life that is under the lordship of Jesus is submitted to his will. A life that is under the lordship of Jesus accepts the authority of God and the fact that we are not our own. Uh -huh. We wake up asking the Lord, what will you have me do today? Huh. We move through our day asking the Lord, where will you have me go today? Uh -huh. We ask God, what will you have me give today? And when we live like that, we can watch God reward our obedience with limitless supplies of everything we will ever need. Amen. And with more than enough so that we can always be generous hey. to those that come across you, on our journey. You, so what does all this have to do with generosity? Well, I believe that God is prophesying to us tonight through this text. He's speaking to AOP, Atmosphere of Praise, directly. In this text, it starts at verse 9. I believe God is speaking to us. Listen to what the Lord said. God says to us, as it is written, because you have scattered your gifts to the poor, your righteousness will endure forever. And I who supply seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed. And I will enlarge the harvest of your right standing with me. Hear the Lord today. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. Amen. And through those whom you bless with your generosity, it will result in thanksgiving to me. The services that you perform are not only supplying the need of my people, but it is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks unto me. And because of the service you give, you prove yourselves. Uh -huh. Others will praise me for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel and your generosity, sharing with them and with everyone. And when they pray for you, their hearts go out to you because of the overflowing grace I have given you. Now right there, atmosphere of praise. Begin to praise God for the tremendous gifts that we have received thus saith the lord thus saith the lord do you want to be a part of god's outpouring of increase here at aop uh -huh. uh, i'm telling you tonight to become a sower become a sower become a cheerful giver of your time of your talents of your finances mm -hmm. become a generous contributor to what god is doing here in the house of of the Lord so that none will perish that's the will of God that none would perish uh huh thank you Jesus be a generous contributor to what God is doing here so that no one would be without eternal life it is the will of the Father that's what it's all about that's what it's all about the will of the Father being accomplished and my question to you now are you down for it? Are you about about it? Are you down for whatever? Whatever it takes, God. Whatever sacrifice I need to make. For me to be determined in my heart, oh God, that I'll not come to the house of the Lord empty-handed, be it finances, be it my talents, be it a smile, be it a, a gift, a hug, a handshake, commit myself to being fully invested uh, in the will and in the plan of God. Bless the Lord for the word of God today.